You know, <laughs> I, I hope you guys know what that music means that we're playing. <laughs> I should probably ask Gary. Well, Gary's probably familiar with it. <laughs> we are back on Taking Care of Business. Our guest by phone is Gary Bernson, the former CIA commander on the ground in Afghanistan. Little quote I wanted to read before I turn it over to Clay. Uh, Taliban proverb, you have all the watches, we have all the time. Clay. Well, where's Gary? Right here. Oh, okay. I just wonder what you thought about that little uh, saying that he just uh, yep, said. You have all the watches, and we've got all the time in the world. They're going to try to outweigh us. They're there. People have to understand that in this conflict in South Asia, and that's what we're in, South Asia, you know, Afghanistan may be a country of 30 million people, but there's 175 million people over there in Pakistan. There are 29 million Pashtuns in the uh, federally administered tribal areas. There, there's a large pool of people from which they can choose as fighters. To prevail there, we have to work with the locals. We've got to train the locals, convince the locals to, be, to work with us and to uh, conduct themselves in a way that will not uh, alienate their population. This is something that the British did very, very well in colonial times. You know, and People don't like to use the term colonial force, but we really have to be thinking almost in those terms to bring the Afghans around because after 30 years of war, they had uh, you know, a, a real significant loss in human capacity there. It's going to take some time still to build that there. Gary, it, it appears today that the U.S. doesn't carry the respect it once had. Uh, is that true from your perspective or what you've seen around the world? It, 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 it's hit and miss. You know, I, I'll have to say this. I, you know, and it depends on the time. I was in Kosovo right after the conflict, and I remember walking down the street in Kosovo after the U.S., you know, uh, you know fought, the, uh, fought the Serbs, used the air war there, and drove them out. And Kosovarians were running up to me and hugging me. They could tell I was an American. I'd go into a restaurant. They'd buy me dinner. You know, <laughs> people would ask me, are you an American? They'd go over and buy, you know, pick up your meal and thank you. Uh, there are places still that there's a lot of people that, that have tremendous respect for us. There's others who are our opponents that have contempt for us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag. But, you know, the, the point is, is I think that most of the world still recognizes the United States has uh, the most awesome military power in the world. And when, un when unleashed, it's unmatched. Um, you know, I always kind of like to, to give the analogy that the United States sometimes is like a big dumb elephant, you know, with the circus, you know. People are standing there and people are insulting the elephant. They're throwing food at it and slapping it, hitting it, and all of a sudden the elephant just has had enough and it runs inside the tent and stomps half the people to death. Um, you, know, you know, we need to be a little bit smarter about, you know, how we conduct ourselves on a, on a, on a daily basis, not allow people to be slapping us around so we don't, to run, don't have to run into the tent. Uh, we need to, to, to be steady in our policies. Uh, the Obama administration has not been that steady. They've been slow. They haven't demonstrated significant leadership uh, as, as, as much as I'd like in this particular case with Libya. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but, you know, thankfully there are some others now that are picking up the, you know, picking up the mantle and, and helping out the international community. That's a good thing. Well, one of the things, um, switching subjects a little bit here, it appears you've written several publications, and one of them was Human Intelligence, Counterterrorism, and National Leadership, which is a practical guide. For it's a policy book, right? I wrote that for yeah. during the uh, campaign between McCain and uh, and Obama. And has anybody used it? Well, uh, I'm not sure. Actually, the guy that wrote the, the the forward for me on that book, Seth Jones, is actually Obama's policy advisor in Afghanistan. Oh, no, that's amazing. You know, according to uh, Woodward's book, The Obama Wars, mm -hmm. another one of those things that just drives you crazy. Um, the U.S. policy now is to, and let me see if I get this exactly right, deny, disrupt and degrade the Taliban. I mean, what does that mean in English? I mean, if I if I spit in somebody's face and kick in their kneecap, that's going to accomplish all three, but it's not going to stop them from doing what they want to do. Yeah, it's it's part of the problem there and and you know, is is part of our problem in America was that we did jump into Iraq a little early. We had them on the run. We we didn't do the 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 work on development in Afghanistan that we needed to do in years 2, 3 and 4. We were busy fighting in Iraq. Taliban got to pop their heads back up, and they've come back at us. And so uh, we didn't secure the gains that we had. And so we're, we're playing catch-up now. And um, it, 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 it's, it's, this is a heavier lift than most people recognize. Mm -hmm. it's a, um, you know, I, have a, I have a son who actually served in, in Afghanistan as a, as a platoon commander at the 82nd Airborne. He was there all last year on the ground down in the south. So 
I, like others, you know, you know, worry at night about this as well, not just for policy in general, but very personally. Sure. Well, uh, I think this was in your book, might have been in Bergman's book. Uh, Wolferwood said it's a mistake to leave a partially destroyed enemy on the field. <laughs> Should we have finished the Taliban off before we went into Iraq? Yes. Okay. The, the short answer there is yes. Oh, I, I have another question before we, we go back to what we were talking about as far as as far as your your role in 2001, I, I saw an interview that I was, when I was doing a little research for the show, that you did, and you were talking about the trunk full of money you used to carry for that six weeks. Well, yeah, I had a, a, a Rubbermaid trunk with about $11 million in it, and um, I was able to use that to, um, to influence uh, both friend and foe. You know, there were times where this was a co- an interesting conflict where we actually had the phone numbers of enemy commanders, we could call them on a satellite phone. I could say, listen, if you'll uh, surrender right now, I won't bomb you into submission and destroy you all. And actually, I'll give you $100,000 if you surrender your 1,000 men. And I had takers. Well, if there's any of that left over, Gary, and you need to... <laughs> I, I know of a nonprofit here in Bakersfield that would be more than happy to take some of that money. It all turned hands. in and all accounted for. <laughs> and, 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 and taxpayers should know that... Those payments were, were cheaper than the gas that was needed for 1B-52 to fly there. Oh, you bet. So I saved the U.S. government a lot of money. We That's did this. We did that war at, on, uh, you know, for pennies on the dollar. We really bet. did. Well, it's costing us millions of dollars for our uh, president to go to Brazil to uh, take his family on a little vacation. Actually, his holiday to Brazil cost a lot more than the CIA spent winning that war in Afghanistan. Yeah, isn't that mind-boggling? <laughs> well, uh, I've got a, a good friend of mine who I know is listening, lives up north. He was Special Forces in Afghanistan. And I called him up this morning and I said, hey, any questions you'd like me to ask? And he came up with the obvious question, which is, where do you think Ben Laden is? Well, uh, of course, for the first couple of years, definitely he was in the Pakistani uh, uh, tribal areas. But enough time has passed where he could have easily been smuggled over to Yemen, too. You know, he's going to be in one of those sanctuaries, you know, Pakistan, you know, Yemen or Somalia. Uh, His family came from Yemen, by the way. His father was a Yemeni that walked on foot into Saudi Arabia and would become the largest construction magnet in the country and become a close friend to the king. So that's why so many Yemenis are actually members of al-Qaeda, leading members. What, what kind of life uh, do you think bin Laden's living if he's always hiding in caves? He's on a permanent camping trip since we, 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 <laughs> we engaged him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We're having a conversation with Gary Bernson, the former CIA commander on the ground in Afghanistan, on taking care of business. Gary, if you could go back today, what would you do? <laughs> uh, if I could go back today, uh, well, you know, the, the, the point is, is I had a limited number of people. So the decisions I made were I sent one team into Tora Bora. I sent another team um, west of him to try to cut him off should he try to cut back inside. Um, I, I had, you know, I did a couple, you know, knowing what I know now, I would have thrown every single man into Tora Bora that I had, but I was, I was dealing with a limited number of that. Some of the Afghans that I worked with, you know, one of the Afghan, two of the Afghan commanders were were were, were loyal. One of them uh, betrayed us. Um, you know, I might have called in airstrikes on him. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, with, with what I know now, but you know, I I I think I did everything I could have given the, the number of the resources I had at that point. And and I have to say this, the men that were serving with me there were were beyond brave. Look, at one point, I sent four men into the mountains with 10 Afghan guides to look for a 1,000 of the enemy. Mm-hmm. They found them. They, they broke out a Special Forces laser acqu- acquisition mechanism and then destroyed hundreds of them, four Americans alone against, you know, almost a 1,000 al-Qaeda. And that was the unit that, that was, the unit that was within 2,000 yards of, of bin Laden. They right, well, this, they, this, actually, this unit was, they, they were within that distance easily. <laughs> But they were above him at that point. There was no way they could go down there, the four of them alone. All they could do was call in airstrikes. And we did 56 hours of airstrikes straight on those guys. We punished them. I'm always amazed with all the air power we have and the sophistication we have in weaponry, why we have to continue to use so much in the gr- along the ground troops. Well, you have to because the, the enemy, it, you know, the enemy were stupid when we entered. You know, they were in large formations. They were, they were organized like an army. And it was like shooting fish in a barrel for us, quite frankly. Um, the, uh, the enemy now, though, are a guerrilla 
force that blends into the civilian population and will cause large numbers of civilian casualties. They'll shoot at us, and then they'll run into a, you know, into a school full of children. Mm. They try to create civilian casualties. They try, they're trying to separate us from the Afghan population by doing that. They'll, uh, they'll take 20 hostages and then start shooting at us, and if we fire at them, the hostages get killed, and then it's a political crisis between us and the Afghan government. It's a very, very different war now. It's, it's, it's completely inverted. We were the insurgents in 2001. Do you think with uh, radio and TV that uh, too much is being distributed to the general public as to what's going on, and I think we have to take a break. Yeah, uh, Gary, answer that question after the break, if you would, sure. okay? This is uh, Taking Care of Business on Current Radio, News Talk 1180.